I greet everyone of the peace of the Lord Jesus. Let us stand up in reverence to the word of our Lord. I'm going to read in Joshua, Old Testament. Joshua chapter 2. Joshua, Old Testament, chapter 2. We're going to read a little bit of chapter the verse verse 12 and then 17 and 18 12 17 18 the 12 only the the left part of Joshua Joshua 2 to 12 17 and 18 the end of the verse says the following then give me a true token now verse 17 so the man said to her we will be blameless for this oath for yours which you have made us swear unless when we come into the land you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down and unless you bring your father your mother and your brothers and all your father's household to your own house I want to praise your name for this fellowship that we can have in you Lord West, that once again you may bless us tonight we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The people of Israel was walking in order to towards their objective, which was to take possession of the land that flows honey and milk. And on their way, towards this land the Lord had operated many wonders many signs and miracles and there was at that time a land called Jericho and in that land called Jericho inhabited a woman and that woman had heard about the deeds and the signs and the miracles that God had done in favor of his people while they were still in Egypt and all the things that God had already done in the midst of his people during the 40 years in which they remained in the desert. And now it was a moment for them to enter and take possession of the promised land. And that woman from Jericho, she had this knowledge. She knew what was to come and what was about to happen. Because on those days it was clear. Everybody knew what was about to happen. And there was upon Jericho a judgment, a sentence, a condemnation. And the Bible says that this woman, she inhabited on the wall of the city. And she had built there her house on that wall. And we could say that she was in a, living in a solid place. A place that apparently, according to men's eyes, was a place that we could say a privileged place. That probably little could have happened to her. And we speak about walls. We also speak about a person that has not made a definition that is not on one side or the other side. 
that has not made a decision. A person that has not positioned still regarding uh, the things that were about to happen, but a person that would come and it would happen because God had ordained, God had spoken, and the word of the Lord never goes back empty. It happens what God desires. So facing with that judgment that woman needed, she needed to make a decision. But she, what she didn't have was an opportunity. She had not had an opportunity to make a decision and to make a definition and to position herself. And the Bible says that there's a text that says that in anger, remember of your mercy. And the Bible says that God is late to be angry. God always waits. God always prolongs. You can say that so that man might have an opportunity to save him or herself. And it was an opportunity for the salvation of Rahab. But not only for Rahab, but also for her entire household. And when you see on the Old Testament, we we'll make a we see a reference to this that says, "Believe in Jesus, and you'll be saved, you and your household." So that opportunity was not only for a single person, but for the entire family of that person. So that we can say that it was a moment that was important for the life of that woman was the moment in which she was going to make a decision in between living and dying. She had to make a decision between the blessing and the curse between life or death. And the word says, my brethren, that she made a good decision. She chose to leave. She chose the blessing. In the words says that at that meeting, meeting that she had with those two men, two is related to the number two is related to fellowship. She was living a moment of fellowship, and in that moment of fellowship. She asked for a sign, but she didn't ask for just about any sign. She asked for the right sign. She wanted the right direction. She was she wanted a secure direction because wrong direction. She had already done throughout her life. She wanted something solid, something that was concrete, something that could remove or deliver her from that situation in which she was living. So she said, give me a sure sign. So maybe you entered here, my brother and sister, especially you, my sister. I'm going to call you already my sister because I know that at the end of the service, you will be already my sister. Isn't it true? Maybe you're living like this, a moment in which you need a sure sign. A moment where you need a, a clear and safe direction for your life, for your home, for your household. But you need to, above all, to make a decision. We're on a service of fellowship with the Lord. And the Bible says that where 
two or three are gathered, there he will be. And we believe that our God is here present. And he brought you to this place in order for you to receive this sure sign from the part of the Lord. So that tonight you may make a covenant, an alliance with our God. Because the desire of our God is to save you and your entire household. And she asked for a, a sure sign. And at that meeting, she received a sure sign from the part of the Lord. And the spies, they told this woman, look, we're going to give a sign. And the sign will deliver your life and your entire household. We're going today make a covenant, a pact with you. But if you do not guarantee your part on the agreement, and well, he was saying that they were saying that, in other words, if you don't do your part, what we are telling you to do, we have no obligation regarding this uh, agreement. So what they're saying was the following. We're going to give you a sign. And you take care very carefully about this sign because we not we are not the ones that need to be to save you what is going to save you is this sign if at the moment in which the trumpets are sounded in the moment in which the people come to take possession of the promised land if this sign is present on the window of your house you and your family will be saved but if this sign is not present on the window of your house, we have no obligation regarding this this agreement. So you will not be saved. Believe in Jesus and you will be saved. If you don't believe, there's no agreement. And the sign, look, we're going to come to the land. Amen. Jesus comes, Maranatha. We will be coming to the land. And if the uh, uh, scarlet ribbon is not on the window scarlet cord is not at the window my brother Rahab she took very good care of that scarlet rope and every day that preceded the arrival of the people of God to take possession of the promised land that scarlet rope was there attached to that window everyone that passed by may not have understood what type of scarlet rope is that what does that mean today the world does not understand people see people speak about it but they don't understand and sometimes they even joke about it <coughs> the rope of scarlet speak of, of the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary for for our lives it represent of the the love of God the grace of God the mercy of God and if a man rejects the grace of God the love of God the mercy of God man is already condemned but if he accepts he saved blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. And the desire of the Lord is that man is saved. 
and he gave us this escape. He made this covenant with every man. And this is our responsibility. Many times a person thinks, no, no, only God knows. God knows. But your salvation only depends on you. We cannot do anything. I cannot do anything even for myself. When the people of God comes down to the land, when Jesus comes, whoever has the rope of scarlet will go up. Whoever doesn't have this the string of scarlet is not going to go with Jesus. String of scarlet is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed there on the cross of Calvary. And this identity has to be in our lives. Because this is going to be the only identification that will be able to save us. This is the only thing that you need to have as a possession, as a treasure, of, as the most precious thing, is, which is the presence of the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that will take us to heaven, that will take us to eternity. Rahab, she accepted the covenant that she had made and did according to what was told her. She tied the scarlet string at, at the window of her house. And when the people of the Lord was about to take possession of the promised land, the trumpet are, were all sounded. The trumpets are being blown. For the people, the affliction, the anguish, the pain, desperation, because, because the end was near. But for her, Rahab, that was not the case. Because Rahab didn't break her covenant, her agreement, her alliance. For the people concerned, for Rahab, we could even say satisfaction. As people around her were being anguished, she could say that she was glorified because for her it was not the end. For her it was a beginning of a new story, history. It was a beginning of a new walk in the presence of the God of Israel. And now, that now became her God. She didn't have the right to be part of the people of God, but she became part of the people of God through the rope of scarlet. We also didn't have the right to be called people of God, but we became people of God through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there in the cross of Calvary, and gave them the power to be called sons of God all of those that write in his name it's written in the book of john she believed and she received this power and her and her household was saved and today my sister who came to the house of the lord the lord has shown that in your walk it's been a walk without any commitment we can even say a little with a little lack of res spiritual responsibility. And you have walked through paths that may have led you to a situation that do not allow you to one day enter into the eternity of God. But tonight, God brought you to this place and he's presenting to you this scarlet, the string of scarlet. And if you believe in Jesus and you accept him as the only sufficient Savior, 
accept his sacrifice in the cross of Calvary for love of our lives, you will be saved. In the same way that the, these people sa saved, and in the same way that Rahab was saved, the same way that we will be saved, the trumpets were blown. In the past, they were they were blown, and today, the trumpets are also being blown, so that Rahab could get ready. The trumpet was being blown, and Rahab was gathering her family members inside of her house. The moment in which her, the people of God entered into the Promised Land, she and her family were saved. So now the trumpets are being sounded today, so that you may gather with your family because the Bible says that the church is the body of Christ so that you may be part of this family and this body that will be taken to heaven and will be with God in His eternity. Amen. Let us sing a song.
church will stand up at this moment. I'm going to ask a word of glorification from the Lord. I will praise the Lord tonight because we're privileged, Lord. Lord, because your love cannot be measured. Even though we are not deserving, we know that we have a Father of love, a counselor that sustains us every day. This is a glorification that we ask, say to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to praise you. You praise the holy name for all your grace, favor, and mercy that He has been poured out upon us every day for another opportunity that you give us for being saved for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that is present upon your people, your church. Confirm, me, Lord, our place in heaven, your eternity. Take us home in peace under your presence, uh, under protection, we pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say, Lord, that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, a good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. And your brother and sister that came today, you are welcome to this place. Every Wednesday at 8 o'clock, Thursday at 8 o'clock, Saturday at 7.30, Sunday in the morning, Sunday school, 10.30 in the morning, and Sunday night at 7.30, we'll have another service of glorification to the Lord. And you are invited to be with us, to participate. If you desire a prayer for your life, a clarification regarding the word or the spiritual gift, remain where you are, raise your hand. And the brethren that are here are going to give you the proper assistance.